The Bible says in 1 Timothy 4, in the last days there will be doctrines of devil. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. So it is very important as we get closer to the end times in the last days that we are not ignorant of what Satan's doing in our world. And some of you were able to see some of that bits and pieces, and then you, gotta, and then you realize, you know, there might be something more to that book than just everyday mundane life. Mm -hmm. Because, man, you see scriptures fulfilling right in front of your yeah. eyes yeah. right Amen. now. Amen. See? So can't be ignorant of what Satan's trying to do with our world. So uh, one of the things that I really am convinced about why that book is real is not just uh, so many current events going on, but you can see that this one world ruler, there's, some, there's somebody that th these people are looking for. Un unity in religion, unity in economy, unity of all races, genders, etc. They want equality, equality, equality. So the thing is this, is that uh, what I'm going to do in this particular video, you've seen me do several videos about uh, the man of sin, about the Antichrist, who is he, what is he, what's his background. But now we're kind of, uh, I'm going to tell you basically uh, my guess, my guess of how probably the Antichrist will come out. So I'm going to give probably three theories here, all right? This is not doctrine. This is a theory, all right? I don't know how he's going to come out, but from everything that I look at current events and from the Bible, he can come out in these three ways. So the first thing, this, was, this one will probably be the most wild one, all right? So I'll put a star next to that one. <laughs> the most wild one, all right? All right, so we do know this. In the Bible, if you look at Daniel chapter 11, what is he? He is known to be a Jew, and he is also known to be a Syrian as well. So he is going to be a Syrian Jew because uh, the God of his fathers, and not only that, he comes out in the branches of one of the horns, which is Syria. So the Antichrist is going to be a Syrian Jew. Not only that, if you look at Revelation chapter 13, he's going to meet all classes of race, uh, races, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. And this was taught in sort, uh, sociology. I don't know if they still do that anymore, but even Sociology 101, they taught this. There are three main races that come out, Caucasian, Negroid, and Mongoloid. And that matches with the three sons of Noah right there. Now, how would that match in Revelation chapter 13 is because of the white belly of the leopard, uh, the yellow skin of the leopard, as well as the black spots. And we also see that from this, it's going to be America right here. And we compare that with the book of Daniel. And the book of Daniel, he gives these four beasts that rise up. And then the one that's the leopard is representing America. But not only that, we also see Revelation chapter 17. He is going to be connected with the Roman Catholic Church. Now, a lot of people say, who is the Antichrist? I really believe this. I really believe that he is going to be the Pope. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to do a separate video one day why I personally, personally to me, I don't believe he's the false prophet. I really believe he's going to be the Pope. But it's not going to be like the Pope today. It's going to be something significant and different. I mean, we had a Jesuit pope, you got to understand, meaning black and white pope. There are some people who say the black pope's the Antichrist, the white pope uh, is going to be the false prophet, but why not both together? I mean, we had one today. So the thing is this, is that now I've had some people wondering, Pastor, you said he's one time this, then you said he's this, then you say he's this and this and this. So what is he, Pastor? I mentioned also some interesting connections with Islam, right? Syria, so there's your Islam. Jewish, so there's Judaism. This doesn't make sense, Pastor. Also, you also mentioned in one video, Pastor, at Daniel chapter 11, he could be a pope or a what? Homosexual. Because he has no desire of women, as that verse says. Okay, Pastor, this doesn't make sense. Well, one, okay, one, it is very possible because don't you know that uh, a lot of schools and a lot of political offices there are looking for this kind of diversity. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, that's true. A lot of it, yeah. That's what the world wants. That's right. Who will the world elect as their leader? You got to think about this. Why did we have Obama back then? Why do people want that? Because there is a diversity, richness in diversity. Well, how can he meet all this, Pastor? So this is my first 
theory, all right? My first theory. Oh, by the way, I didn't give the wildest one. Perhaps he's also some alien that comes out of outer space, you know? <laughs> That's the wildest one, all right? Maybe some reptilian or something like that. So then, how in the world is he going to meet all this? Well, perhaps, perhaps, you know, you see those UFO sightings, you know? He crashes someplace, God knows where, and then he crashed over there, and then the government or the Vatican or whoever who are involved in those alien projects took this little creature with them. And then down in those labs, you know, breed and raise the person to become something powerful and almighty one day. And this person, uh, he grows up <clears throat> with Muslim and Jewish parentage. So then he'll grow up with uh, Muslim and Jewish parentage, and he can be a Syrian Jew by ethnicity. Ethnicity. And that's very possible today. That's very possible today. I'm sure you can find a lot of Syrian Jews today with mixed marriages. That's by ethnicity. But if you have it as a Syrian Jew, he could also meet the three classes of races right here. Because as you know, <clears throat> Jewish lineage is very mixed. You have a mixture of Japheth and Shem seed mingled with it. So he can meet all the three races like that. So he grows up with Muslim and Jewish parentage. Now, everyone wants to resolve the conflict going on with uh, the Muslims and the Jews. That is a hot topic. That is a hot topic. But who will be a great person who can take care of it? Someone who's born from these two lines. But when he grows up, he'll be grown up through Catholic training. And uh, why did you put the homosexual in there too? Because I'm sure you know your priest. I'm sure you know your Catholic leaders, all right? And I have some Catholic members here, and they all know that too, all right? They told me that. So the, so the thing is this, is that this won't be a surprise then. This won't be a surprise. So he's raised up in that manner, and since the Catholic Church, as some people might know, they have a control over a lot of things right there. So uh, they have connections. You got to understand this. It doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or if you're a Republican. You can be liberal or conservative. You will find a Catholic there. Look at Fox News, Catholic, Catholic, Catholic. Look at the uh, liberals, Stephen Colbert, you know, Catholic. Look at Hollywood. Do you know how many of them are Catholic and they're liberal? Oh, yeah. See, this is a no-brainer right here. Well, how is he going to do all that? See, this is perfect for what? A one-world person that they can assimilate themselves with. So he can gather the homosexuals, he can gather the liberals, he can gather conservatives, he can uh, gather the Muslims and the Jews, and this Antichrist will come and set up that peace, peace, peace. You don't think that this world would want to elect him after that? So through that he uh, grows up in that kind of uh, background and lifestyle. And then America don't you think America will be a main nation who will definitely back this up? So they will back up this Catholic, and then he can also refer to his Muslim and Jewish cultures to win the sympathy of everybody. But the Catholics, they're also the ones who's promoting this ecumenical movement, right? Go to Protestant churches, go to the synagogues, and go to the mosque. There will be Catholics involved who would try to befriend all these religions together. So this is not a problem. So he is Catholic in background. That is the number one religion I can think of that can meet all sides of political parties as well as religions. The best candidate ever. I'm sure there are other religions, other political offices that can do that, but this one is the best thing. But isn't it interesting, what does Catholic mean? Universal. So this is a really interesting thing what the Antichrist can do. And America will be, it is like the number one nation that pushes diversity, diversity. So that's where you can get the main body of the leopard supporting all this. That would make so much sense. All right, now number two, okay, he could just be a simple alien that comes flying out of outer space. Do -do 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 -do. Maybe over St. Peter's Cathedral, you know, uh -huh. comes out 13 feet tall, you know, maybe blonde hair, blue eyed, whatever. And he says, peace be unto you. I am the promised Messiah you all been waiting for. Now, the thing is this, 
is that Revelation, if you look at Revelation chapter 6, it seems to point that out, that this could be possible. Because he just simply comes down, comes out of nowhere, and conquers the world and conquers. So he can just come out of nowhere. When you look at Revelation chapter 6, what does it say? The first seal is released. And then what? The Antichrist just suddenly comes out, out of nowhere, go, going forth, conquering and to conquer. And it, look, think about this. It would make sense that the whole world would go into this because how many scientists would want oh, to yeah. do discussions with this alien? How many political leaders, I believe all nations, would want to communicate with this person? They want to get involved because this is somebody from another world. How many people, uh, how many religions were waiting for their Messiah, for somebody to t give world peace? See that? Because... It could be we go through so much uh, problems in our world and wars and famines and somebody please solve poverty. Who's going to do it? Then suddenly out of nowhere, that can happen. Just suddenly out of nowhere, somebody comes down and then the whole world will accept that. They can accept that. They can accept that if we go through hardship, we go through trial, we go through rough times. And then somebody out of nowhere, he proves his power, which is why, you know, it's not a problem for him. You know, because he's demonic. So he's got the power to prove it and everything. And then the atheists and the scientists won't have any problem with that because they taught all along we were created out of gravity. So this guy came out of nowhere from gravity and outer space, out of somewhere. You can call him God, say the atheists, but we believe him as a higher power. <clears throat> and the religions, the Catholics, the Jews, and then the Muslims, they would say this is the Messiah that we've all been waiting for. And then the post-tribbers will say, we went through the tribulation. Now this <laughs> king came down at Armageddon and conquered the world. Yeah. All right, now number three, number three, it can be more simple than you think. He can be like Judas Iscariot because Judas Iscariot is called what? The son of perdition. That's found at John chapter 17. And uh, if you look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, son of perdition is undoubtedly the Antichrist. You ever wondered how Judas Iscariot was born and raised? Come on. So it could be through normal parentage. Just a normal human. Because Jesus Christ says it were better for him that he had not been what? Born. So it could be just a normal person. And I certainly don't believe in the uh, uh, Calvinist doctrine of being a reprobate. You know, that Judas Iscariot had no choice. Oh, poor him. God happened to pick him as the unlucky number. And he's, no, normal human. And this person, what? He made wrong choices. And through wrong choices, the Lord saw fit. This would be the perfect tool then. If he's not going to get saved, if he's not going to get right with God, now I can use him for what? To be the fulfillment of scripture to betray Jesus Christ. If it wasn't Judas Iscariot, God can find somebody. Look, there are so many people in our, in our world. You don't think God can find one somewhere? To betray Jesus yeah. see so I mean the Calvinists they think that it's so difficult that God had to force him and stuff like that no that's ridiculous God can find anyone to fulfill scripture with free will he can do that so it's just a normal human grew up what the right religion mm -hmm. the right upbringing mm -hmm. taught right given the scriptures and working side by side next to God Almighty himself and he happened to be the one that was the man of sin. He happened to be the one that's going to be the Antichrist in the future. Now think about this. Could this person be someone who's probably a professing saint, professing Christian? That's something to think about. He's not saved to begin with. He was just born, raised in the right kind of upbringing, the right kind of background, the right kind of religion, saw the scriptures, etc. Could be any normal human. Can such a thing come to pass? Oh, it's very possible. We live in a day and age, folks, where people make wrong choices and they can do the most sinful, wicked things in our world today. If there is an antichrist that come, can come out now, there's no better timing than now. There are so many people who hate God, who hate the Bible, and they don't care. So the thing is this, is that that's why, it's some, so, can you imagine who's, who the parents of Judas Iscariot were? 
makes you think more carefully, you know, about having a proper Christian home and upbringing, see, and to take it seriously. That can be a valuable lesson. All right, well, anyway, so this is just food for thought. <laughs> food for thought, all right? And uh, he could come out any other way. He can come out any other way. But this is just everything that I just took in totality. I'm just spitting words out of my mouth from everything that I uh, got in my head, and then I showed all the verses on it. So it can show these possibilities. It also is a very sobering thought. It's also a very sobering thought to think about, about the importance of being a saved Christian and to serve God properly, rightly, and especially your own children as well. And what kind of a world we live in. They seek this, see. Yeah. They seek this. And those of you who are into conspiracies, you notice this, that he can meet all of this kind of stuff perfectly. You know, he can get the Jews and the Jewish elites and Rothschilds. He can get all the Jesuits and the Catholics involved. He can get all, all of Hollywood. And he can get all the liberal politicians. He can get all the Republican politicians. He could even get Trump right here. I mean, he can do anything. He can meet all the races right here, all religions. He can get all sciences. This is truly the Savior, the Messiah, mm -hmm. that the world is seeking for.